in a couple of decades, when people look back, the thing they will remember from the COVID crisis. This, this was the moment when every, everything came in, that we agreed to be surveyed all, all the time. Not, and maybe most importantly, all oh, this was the moment when surveillance started going under the skin. I want to talk about the shit you want to say. Every motherfucker thing you said is bullshit. And I can't really listen to this shit anymore. You broke my fucking heart when she died in the floor. Now I'm sitting here all alone inside my place. And I don't know what to do with this gun in my face. And I'm all out some horses with a gun in my hand. Pull the trigger now, baby, I'll be back in time. Pull the trigger now, baby, I'll be back in time.
And so what I'm going to try to do is to, um, with as much clarity as I can summon here, zap on and to laser and to warm up and to buzz and to tickle and to stimulate the shackles of language that are tying you to any particular religion or any particular political party, and even to try and question your, your uh, enslaving commitments to uh, your country, God knows, possibly even to your gene pool, and possibly even to your parents.
know, I know it's difficult. You can't really go outside. You can't do much of anything. You don't have any money. Your businesses are closing. It's difficult. I know. We're all struggling in this together. I might have taken bailout money for my eight businesses. Your grandma may have died inside the old folks home if you put the COVID patients in there. But you know, you can say whatever you want to me. I rule. So, fuck you. Chose to sit there with my wife uh, and a number of other couples that were outside the household. And you can quibble about the guidelines. Because I need to preach and practice, not just preach and not practice. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the subcommittee. On July 4th, 2023, Independence Day, Judge Terry A. Doty of the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Louisiana entered a historic injunction against the White House and other federal officials. This injunction prevents them from, quote, urging, encouraging, pressuring, or inducing in any manner the removal, deletion, suppression, or reduction of content containing protected free speech posted on social media platforms. Judge Doty's opinion contains 82 pages of detailed factual findings supported by 577 citations of the evidence, which is drawn from roughly 20,000 pages of the federal government's own emails and communications with social media platforms in six full-length depositions. In its recently filed stay motions, the government has hardly bothered to dispute any of these factual findings. The Court of Appeals has entered a, quote, temporary administrative stay of this injunction and granted expedited argument, briefing and argument on August 10th. Contrary to some recent suggestions, a temporary administrative stay is, quote, routine practice in the Fifth Circuit. That's a direct quote from the recent decision in N. Ray Abbott, and it does not reflect any judgment of the merits. Today, I want to offer seven observations drawn from the Louisiana opinion. First, the Louisiana court found, based on overwhelming evidence, that federal officials are the cause of the censorship of the viewpoints they disfavor. The government likes to claim that social media platforms acting on their own would apply their policies and censor all this content anyway. This is demonstrably incorrect. Again and again, the Louisiana court found that the platforms would not have suppressed this speech, but for the fact that the federal officials were pushing for it. The deplatforming of Alex Berenson, the throttling of Tucker Carlson's content, the silencing of the so-called disinformation dozen, which includes Mr. Kennedy, uh, the suppression of much of the so-called borderline, which is quote, often true content on Facebook's platforms, the censorship of Hunter Biden laptop story, and much more. All these were suppressed because of the efforts of federal officials. Second, the scope and reach of federal censorship is staggering. As the Louisiana court repeatedly found, it affects, quote, millions of social media posts and speakers all across America. It affects virtually every American who reads, listens, engages, or posts on social media about great disputed political and social questions that federal censors have stuck their fingers into. Third, federal censorship is ongoing and it shows no signs of relenting. Federal official censorship efforts are in full swing and they're expanding to new frontiers. Left unchecked, federal censorship will reach virtually any disputed social and political question over which federal officials want to impose their power. Fourth, the Louisiana opinion shows that federal officials are most eager, most focused on focused on silencing truthful speech and to muzzle the most influential critics of the administration and its policies. Tucker Carlson, Alex Berenson, and many others were targeted 
not because what they were saying was necessarily false, but because it was the most effective criticism of the narrative line that the administration was pushing at the time. Censorship is not about truth. It is about power, preserving and expanding the power of the censors and the political narratives they prefer. Fifth, federal officials are deeply intertwined with what other witnesses have called the censorship industrial complex. Louisiana court made very detailed findings about the close connections between many federal officials and that mass surveillance and mass censorship enterprise that calls itself the Election Integrity Partnership and the Morality Project. Not just CISA officials, but White House, State Department, and Surgeon General officials have deep ties to that enterprise. As the Louisiana court found, CISA and the EIP were completely intertwined. Six. Federal officials don't just dictate the outcomes of specific content moderation decisions. They also directly induce changes to the content moderation policies. Policies of major social media platforms to ban disfavored viewpoints in advance. And seventh, the federal censorship enterprise has succeeded in transforming online discourse by rendering entire viewpoints virtually unspeakable on social media, which is the modern public square. This ongoing distortion of the most fundamental American freedom, the right to free speech, is intolerable under the First Amendment. Thank you.
Maybe taking drugs Gives it me away I hear the police And tell them that I was dang Motherfucking friend When all you really did Was keep me up When I was a motherfucking kid 